the things I think about most with this whole topic of kind of a Drogo and thinking better is how it relates to my son. In many ways, that's kind of the genesis of what got me started down this path, or at least one of them. Um, and it's tricky with parenting, right? Particularly this topic, because when, when it comes to this topic, what I often preach is um, objective truth and clarity and as much data and input as you can get so you have the full picture and you can kind of make the most logical decision. But when it comes to kids, there's there's often a prevailing view that, you know, kids are different, particularly young kids, my kid's seven, um, that you don't want to overload them. You don't want to give them too much. They're not mature enough. They're not mentally sophisticated enough to handle all the complexities and nuance of the world. And, you know, you shouldn't necessarily educate them at too young of an age about certain things, right? Whether that be social issues, you know, racism or political issues or violence and things that happen or just some of those bad things in the world. Um, or just, the, again, the things that are, that are maybe too complex for them to understand. The fear being it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to overload them. They're not able to handle it. Therefore, wait, just hold off until they're older. The problem with that is that it assumes as if there is nothing and no one else that is filling that void. That if you keep that quiet, right, if you don't speak of that, it acts as if it doesn't exist. But it does exist, right? Our, our society, our world, these things seep in. Maybe not consciously, maybe not directly, but in different ways they are picking up things, right? Their, their brains are sponges, as we all know, at that young age. And they see the world and they hear little things from friends, from teachers, from other family members, from TV shows, and it starts to build, right? And so much of what we talk about is the subconscious and how the subconscious is acting um, in its own ways, forming its own beliefs, doing its own things. And when we don't address this, these things directly and explicitly, that's what's happening. Our, our, our children, in my case, my son, what I believe is his subconscious mind is taking in all these inputs right? Some, some very explicit, some implicit, and it's starting to formulate views and beliefs. And now he's not in control of that. He's not consciously making those decisions. He doesn't actually have full clarity on what he's doing. It's the, it's the exact opposite of what we normally preach. Now he's, he's got piecemeals of it, right? And who knows what the source of a lot of that information is coming from, what show he's watching, perhaps a YouTube video, again, what a friend might say. And to me, that's just too risky. <laughs> that's too, that's scary to me right? That's, that's the thing I want to avoid. I want him to be fully aware, fully conscious, fully thoughtful and logical about how he thinks about these topics. So I would much rather introduce it to him earlier on, right? In the appropriate way, but in a way in which he can give them the due respect they deserve and, and ask questions and, and directly consciously think about things and determine where he sits. And it'll evolve and it'll change over time, but I can kind of help guide him a little bit down that path. Because the other piece of it is not only is it happening regardless, right? And he's gonna form beliefs and get influences either way. There's also this point of when he does start to learn about them at whatever age you deem it's appropriate, there, there becomes this little bit of like conflict or, or maybe even resentment, or I don't know what the right word is, where it's like, man, like I thought the world Consciously, I thought the world was completely different. Now all of a sudden I'm finding out all these, these problems or issues or the little complexities in it, and he's not ready for it, right? It comes as more of a shock, and it can manifest out into a form of distrust, right? Why, why should I trust anything that I'm being told right now or that I believe? For the last 10, 12, 15, whatever it is, years of my life, I've been led to believe things were a certain way. They were simple. They were easy. There was no, none of these issues in the world, and now all of a sudden it's all hitting me in the face at once, unexpectedly possibly, I don't think that's the answer either. So for those couple reasons, again, it goes against some of the prevailing wisdom, but I think it's important to, you know, in an appropriate, age-appropriate way, have these conversations with our kids. Talk to them about the complexities and the nuances of the world and some of the ugly things. Get into the mud, right? We don't have to have all the answers, but help them to start to think about it because that's the best thing we could do, right? The world is the world. Our minds are our minds. There's flaws and issues all around all of that, the world and our minds. The best thing we can do is equip them, equip them to gain clarity, equip them to be able to think, understand their thoughts, step back from their thoughts, observe them, reflect, entertain the possibility it might be different. All the things we talk about, we want to give them those tools. And I think the best way you can do that is to start early, start young on relevant topics and work through those things together.